predators. Once again, humans become the prey of intergalactic Jamaicans using Olympic Games weapons on steroids. This is of course the third time, or the fifth time, if you want to count AVP 1 and 2. Just kidding, I know no one considers them to be canon. I think it's worth noting that this is the first sequel in no less than 19 years. It's also worth noting that the series is now 23 years old and there's only three movies in it. I guess what I'm trying to get at is that I really, really hope that someone else out there can see that this is simply not meant to be a series. Remember the first one? It was good, wasn't it? You get the big badasses with guns and Clearly they know how to use them, and then the Predator comes along. I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but honestly, was it missing anything? No. Really think, was it missing anything? Anything that we didn't ourselves imagine? No, right? They made a sequel because people wanted to see the Predator kill more, and then, somehow, not another movie was made in this series, for 19 years. Or if you desperately want to include the Paul W.S. Anderson atrocity, 13 years. That's a lot of time for what many consider to be an iconic monster. There's fan interest, there's money in it, this was made for 40 million so clearly it can be done on what by today's standards in Hollywood, a small budget for a summer blockbuster. The thing is, the first one was great, and part of the greatness was that it didn't outright state as much as hint. It left us wanting more. Unfortunately, some people think that this more should actually be given to us. I beg to differ. There aren't a lot of movies that spell everything out for you that you really need or want to watch again. Certainly not when compared to the ones that have you guessing. We may want answers to these questions, but that doesn't mean that we should necessarily get them, not in the world of fiction. When Robert Rodriguez set out to make this movie, well, produce anyway, he didn't direct it, he's quoted as saying that he learned what to do from the first movie and what not to do from the second movie and the two AVP movies. On paper, that sounds good. On celluloid, it doesn't look good. The movie apparently isn't a remake of the first one, and it certainly references the first one, but too much of it is so directly lifted from the first one. And for apparently realizing that the two AVP movies weren't good, this makes several mistakes that they did. Both this and the original Predator have these sets of guys with weapons who know how to use them. The thing is, in the first one, it's this well-polished unit. You know, there's a reason they call it a unit. They work together. And we get an early scene where it is made perfectly clear that they know exactly what they're doing with these guns. In this one, it's just a bunch of random, seemingly hand-picked, people who know how to kill. It includes a member of an African death squad. I'm sorry, how much training do those guys have? Also, a serial killer. Again. I'm sorry, but Manson would not necessarily be that interesting to hunt. Anyway, this doesn't particularly establish that they know exactly what they're doing with their guns. It's also a problem that the entire focus is on them being hunted. That's how the movie starts, and that's all we ever see. The first movie was actually not directly about the Predator to begin with. If you think about it, it doesn't show up for a little while, and they're not sent there to hunt it. They come upon it, and it takes up its rightful role in the movie as main antagonist. Another huge problem with this movie is that we do not care about these characters. They go out of their way to make them repulsive human beings. Absolutely despicable. I'm not gonna lie to you, as much as I love the creature, the Predator, I was bored at portions of this movie. Once or twice around the middle, and especially the end, the last 20 minutes, 
I just wanted the thing to end because I could not give a fuck about any of these people. And that's the thing, you can't really have that much tension or suspense when you don't care about the people something might happen to. The deaths are almost all anticlimactic. The film can't make up its mind if it wants to be a thriller or an action movie. And it kind of winds up being neither. We really don't get the sense that they're being stalked by the predators. Even the fairly appropriately sparse use of POV shots with the heat vision don't really compel us into thinking, uh-oh, they're being watched. I will say that some of the camera work is really good, and I haven't given up on the unfortunately, but in this case, aptly named director Nimrod. I also gotta say, the Asian dude kicked fucking ass. He was so fucking smooth every moment that he was on screen, especially when he was the focus. You just got this sense that he knew exactly what he was doing, and they never try too hard with his character. I definitely want to watch more movies with that actor. Brody is decent, but they have this great actor growling out his lines, this pitiful, cliched, action stereotype dialogue that makes up most of what they actually say in the movie. You can't go wrong with Trejo, just point the camera at him and that's it, and he works well in this, as he always does. I was pretty happy with how Ali did in this, although I found his African accent to be a tad over the top. Fishburn, I'm sorry dude, I like you a lot, I could have done without your part in this. And then we have Topher Grace, he seriously needs to stop appearing in over the top third movies in franchises that are dying. He's not helping them any. Here, he's the irritating comic relief, and he is powerfully unfunny. In general, the humor in this is just piss poor. I laughed maybe once or twice at times where I was supposed to. Tofu Grace, the serial killer rapist jokes, Lawrence Fish, just such lame and obvious jokes. The behavior of the predators isn't even consistent, and I mean just within this movie, even if you don't count any other appearance of the creature ever, just within this movie, their behavior is inconsistent. The CGI varies, but it tends to be pretty good. The action is seldom memorable. Because of how little we care about the characters, a lot of what happens really has no impact. At times it tries to use fast editing to excite us, and it seldom works. I will say that the fairly undistinguished visual style wasn't flashy. The predators aren't necessarily overexposed, at least early on, but when the first one it built up, this just kind of meanders, and the creatures don't inspire any more awe as the film progresses. All in all, it's about what you expect. There's less action and more attempts at suspense than I had expected, but it doesn't come anywhere near the level of the first one. If you can maybe imagine a child seeing the Mona Lisa, and that child then proceeds to draw in crayon this crude image of a woman smiling, you might be reminded of the original, and you can certainly tell that the person is trying to show that they like the original, but you just can't quite get yourself to believe that it possesses the depth of the original, or that it took anywhere near as much skill or effort to produce. That's my spoiler for a review of Predators. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.